the world of Final Fantasy is filled with all sorts of iconic imagery and creatures recurring throughout the series. From your Moogles, to your Cactars, to the ever-terrifying Malboros, which I've come to hate from dealing with them in Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy fans are sure to recognize many faces from throughout the series, but none perhaps as iconic as the Chocobo. Coming in many colors, shapes, and sizes, Chocobos are adorable, especially the fat ones in Final Fantasy XIV, just look at that thing. Chasing the greens, it's so cute. So it's really no wonder that Square has thrown these fine feathered horse birds into basically every mainline Final Fantasy, as well as a number of Chocobo spin-off games. Anyone played Chocobo Racing? I didn't. Back in the day on the PS1, we got Chocobo's Dungeon 2. Yeah, the first one was a Japan exclusive, or as it's called in Japan... So when the sequel was released here in the States and none of us had really heard of the first one, it was... probably confusing. I mean, this was at a time when in the States we were told Final Fantasy 4 was 2, 6 was 3, and then Squaresoft in America decided to stop lying to us and be like, hey, this one's number 7. Are you confused yet, kids? Then, in 2007 in Japan and 2008 in the States, we got Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Dungeon, which took many elements and characters from the PS1 games and brought them into a new and improved game. Except this is Sid in the PS1 games and this is Sid in the Wii version. Personally, I prefer the original design, but I guess I should be glad he's not covered in zippers. Jump to 2019 and we now have the game we're talking about today. Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon Everybody on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. Switch. This, like the previous Chocobo's Dungeon games, is what fans of the genre may refer to as a mystery dungeon game, much like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. It's a roguelike RPG hybrid, taking traditional roguelike turn-based gameplay and tile-based movement in procedurally generated dungeons, but removing the permadeath aspect of roguelikes and adding in RPG mechanics and story progression. In Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, everybody, you play as this cute little Chocobo. Chocobo and his pal Sid are treasure hunters who, as the game opens, approach the tower in the sands where the game teaches you how to play. Now, if you've seen my Sorcery Saga Curse of the Great Curry God video and think this looks pretty similar, you're right! After completing the tutorial, Sid and Chocobo encounter rival treasure hunters, Irma and Volg, before they're all zapped by a beam of light and Chocobo's possibly unconscious body is thrown about to the game's theme song, which just really seems to mismatch what's going on on screen. Sid and Chocobo do wake up in the town of Lost Time, a town where a bell called the Bell of Oblivion rings and everybody forgets... basically everything. Ah, uh, that's the Bell of Oblivion. I mean, what can you do, right? <laughs> who are you? Next, you meet Sherma, who is probably the most important and adorable character aside from Chocobo. I mean, just look how cute she is. Oh, Chocobo! I found my staff! See? In fact, this whole game is just full of cute. I just love that you can go around and talk to all the animals in town, including Al here. Al is a good boy. And then a bunch of stuff just starts to happen. The sky goes dark, a meteor crashes into the town, which turns out to be an egg with a baby in it. A portal appears over the mayor's head and the baby just flies in there, just like right up in there. All the while I'm just watching this happen and I'm like, what? Now this isn't a spoiler, it happens basically before the first dungeon and the baby is actually on the cover of the Wii game. That's him. He's just older. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Still sitting inside the egg is a brooch that Chocobo puts on and now he goes into the weird mind portal to pursue Super Baby and the game's first real dungeon is underway. In the dungeons, there's loot to collect, enemies to fight, traps to avoid, all while managing your HP and your hunger as you proceed through each randomly generated floor to advance to the end of the dungeon where you usually fight a boss and find the baby. Also, you'll die a bunch. I mean, it's definitely a more accessible roguelike, but it's still a roguelike. The game is gonna have some challenge to it despite its cute exterior. And when you do die, you will lose every item you have that is not equipped, as well as all the money that you have on you, permanently. So, 
that gets frustrating. So between dungeons, you better make sure that you store any items and gill that you don't want to risk losing. The turn-based movement in combat is a little weird sometimes, like when enemies cast longer spells, forcing you to watch the attack animation before you can attack again. It's only like a few seconds, but once you're accustomed to the normal flow of just attack, attack, it does kind of throw you off, and you gotta love killing an enemy only for it to cast a mobilize on you last second. At the start of each dungeon, you can choose from one of several classic Final Fantasy jobs. You got Knights, Dragoons, Black Mage, White Mage, Red Mage, just all the mages, really. Each with their own unique look and set of special abilities. The main thing that separates this from the Wii version is the new buddy system, hence the spelling of the title, Every Buddy. Chocobo can now bring along a buddy with him in each dungeon as you play the game and unlock them. Buddies are unlocked from either progressing the story, completing challenge dungeons, or defeating the same enemy types repeatedly until you earn enough buddy points to unlock them. Or just DLC. That works too. Buddies can help by fighting alongside you, helping control crowds of enemies in those moments when you're swarmed and you have no narrow hallways to run to. Or acting as a meat shield when you do. Yes brother, be my shield. May your life be taken in my stead. Also, boss fights are pretty cool. They're pretty challenging. I mean, sometimes they're really frustrating, but they're still cool. i rather not show you a lot of the boss footage because, spoilers. Now this game is not all dungeon, dungeon, dungeon. I mean, there is a lot of that, hence the title, but there's also a lot to do when not in the dungeon. Like this. Doesn't that look fun? From interacting with the bright and colorful townsfolk, to farming, to fishing, which, I swear, the first time I did it, I thought the line was coming out of the chocobo's butt. Like, I was genuinely so confused. Turns out it's just, uh, it's just tied to his tail feather there. But tell me it doesn't look like it shoots out of his butt for a second. With all of these extra things you can do, the game almost feels like a Harvest Moon game. You know, before Natsume took over and now Harvest Moon looks like this. Sound design is also pretty great, especially if you're a fan of Final Fantasy. With familiar sound effects and even remixes of tons of Final Fantasy songs from throughout the series, hearing some of those familiar tunes come up unexpectedly is just nice. And it had me smiling from time to time, that's for sure. The voice acting isn't great, but some other performances at least shine more than others. All of this comes together for a nice little package that is a lot of fun. From the cutesy art style, to the gameplay, to everything else, it's not the greatest game by any means, but it is a solid game that is easy to recommend for Final Fantasy fans who are okay with something different. But if you're just looking for a roguelike, at 40 bucks there are probably better ones out there for cheaper if you really don't care about Final Fantasy. Now, if you've played the Wii version already, is this one really worth picking up just for the buddies? Well, I'm sad to say, no. This one is by far the inferior version, for one reason alone. It doesn't have this sweet anime intro song. She's out. 